So th these are the contents for today, a little bit of background, then I will describe a, learn, a Moodle-based learning situation focusing on the Sustainable Development Goals, then uh, the method I used to assess whether this learning situation lesson was useful or not, and I, I will show some preliminary results, and finally I will state the limitations. Uh, a bit about the background, the background, I uh, think you, all of you know about the SDGs, promoted by the United Nations, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, achieve a better world in 2030. The, the SDGs are interlinked. Uh, our SDG is four, uh, quality education, and through four we can achieve most of the SDGs. Education reduces poverty by increasing people's income, educate people are better informed about illnesses and, and take measures, sports, Eat, don't eat that much, don't drink that much, don't smoke, those things. Uh, education can empower women to overcome discrimination. Uh, the learning situation, uh, focusing on the SDGs, the participants were uh, preserved as teachers enrolled in a face-to-face -face English as a foreign language course. Three groups of students, first-year students participated in the, in the study, uh, in the learning situation. Uh, main goals of the learning situation, become familiar with the SDG. Remember, they are first-year students. I asked them, and most of them didn't know what the SDGs were, so it makes sense to become familiar with the SDGs, reflect on the importance of each SDG, reflect on how we can contribute to achieve the SDGs, reflect on the role of teachers. They are preserved as teachers, and they will, be, they will become teachers, so it makes sense. Uh, foster the students design activities, incorporated one or more se or several SDGs and H5P content. Um, Moodle is the, the LMS in my region, also at the university level, but also in uh, schools. So when they become teachers in the, public sec in the public system, they will be using Moodle, and they will have course H5P2 uh, and again it's an EFL course so they will they, they should improve their uh, level of English the level of the class is B1 intermediate level uh, now I will present a selection of activities uh, the lesson starts building vocabulary related to sustainability we we use uh, H5P activities on the left we have uh, drag the words and on the right uh, find the words uh, then the lesson continues with discovering the SDGs. Uh, we start with a brainstorming. What, are the, the, what do you think are the biggest problems of the world today? It's not uh, Amazon, it's not uh, Netflix, doesn't work. These are the, the biggest problems. Uh, uh, after that, we watch a two minutes video about the SDGs produced by the United Nations. Uh, it has a hip hop rhythm. And it has, it's in English with Spanish subtitles. Um, it briefly describes the 17 SDGs. And I tell them, after watching the video, I will ask you how many SDGs do you remember? So we, we do an image juxtaposition. Uh, and then I ask them uh, about the, the, the goals. So what is number one? And then we see the, the solution. Uh, so it's speaking activity. Uh, then, once we know the, the names of the goal, the names of the sustainable development goals, uh, we, we focus on the on the goals, on the aims of the goals. So we do some uh, drag and drop, and also drag the words uh, to become familiar with with the goals of the SDGs. Uh, then we move to a more complex activity, and then I ask them to to think uh, what is the most important SDG for you, and to think what they can do to achieve the SDGs. They can either write a short text or record an audio, and then uh, we discuss. This is a big one level, so writing, uh, recording short audio, and then they are ready to speak about it. It's a class discussion. Other activities in the learning situation reflected on the role of teachers because they will have to make decisions how they incorporate the SDGs. Now it's compulsory, so they will have to do it. But still, they, they have to think about it. Also, they design a poster or infographic about the SDGs. And we have some follow-up assignments. We read the book Malala. And also, at the end of the course, they design activities for primary school students incorporated one SDG and one H5P activity, and they are able to do it. So I'm very happy at the end of the course, this, this was about the three hours. 
method before the lesson. I tested their knowledge about the SDGs and also after, and I also asked them what was their opinion about the, the lesson. So before the, the learning situation, half of the class didn't know about the SDGs, and after the lesson, uh, we see that most of them, they know it's promoted by the United Nations, about the number before, uh, they don't know how many there they are, after the lessons they do. We watch a video, an interactive HVP video about circular economy, so they understood the video because they are able to, to explain what is circular economy. I also asked them if they, it's important to introduce the SDGs in my course, and as we can see, most of them, they, they think it is. Uh, I also asked them if the H5P activities help them to improve their knowledge about the SDGs, and we can see again that they, we have positive answers. If they felt motivated using H5P, and again we have positive results. Uh, main limitations, there's no control group. I don't know if doing that in a more traditional way would be better or not, because I thought it was going to be better, so I. I use Moodle, that's the platform we, we should use. Uh, a short test about the SDGs and a small sample, three groups. And this is it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Uh, anyone got uh, questions uh, to Juan about uh, this presentation? I can answer easy questions. Come on. Oh, easy questions. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you, you got them to make some H5P activities. What, what are the preferred ones? What are the favorite ones, really? The okay. most popular ones? Okay, I'm very, I'm very surprised about the, how they use H5P because I, I spent two hours teaching them how to create H5P content. I teach them how to use three simple H5P activities and then they design 10 different ones. So I'm very surprised how fast they learn. Uh, I would say that all the people maybe don't learn that fast. But I would say students 17, 18 years old, they, 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 just, they are just fast learners. Cool, so, thank you. Yeah, they use all sorts of H5P activities. Even some that I didn't teach them how to use, so I'm very happy about that. Any more questions? It's specifically about the SDGs. Do you find that they are more present in the kind of uh, curriculums that you are addressing? Because it's, is it uh, something usual for you to find it in language training in this case? Because they are, these are pre-service uh, English teachers, right? Do they get this sort of SDG content in, their, in, the, in, the, in the curriculum later on? Okay, our curriculum uh, at my university is from 2011. So it means we have to change it uh, because the, the SDGs are from 2015. Uh, but we, we didn't have the millennium objectives either. So, uh, so we are in the process of changing that from top down, but from bottom up, the university encourages us to do that, in, introduce the SDGs. And, and now in the public sector, uh, I mean, primary school students, um, secondary school students, also uh, pre, um, okay, the youngest ones, also it's in the curriculum, in the new 2020 curriculum. So, so they will be dealing with that. Even if the previous generations didn't, we didn't teach them about that, or some teachers didn't, uh, they will be uh, it's a, at, at all levels. It's a European thing, so. Across all levels. No, no, it's in the curriculum. It's in the curriculum now. But not at the university level, we have to change it. We, because it takes many years to change things at top down. But, uh, yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Carl. Thank you.